Greetings all of you patient potatoes, and welcome back at long last to TerraTech with me, Lathrex. And of course, welcome to a first look at what is now quite an old update to the game, but the newest update for me, welcome to Circuits and Systems. The update which has added a whole load of new mechanics to the game. That is to say, essentially we now have 3D redstone. So by this, what I mean is we now have logic blocks in the game. We have inputs, we have wires, we have loads of different gates and everything else. All of the stuff you'd expect, in addition to the ability to transmit these signals from tech to tech. Now it does seem like we're still in the early days of all these things, but honestly it looks like already there's a lot of stuff I want to add to my base. So all we're doing today is we're going to figure out a nice way of making an actually interesting mini base using as many of these mechanics as possible. Now I am terrible when it comes to these things, so please bear that in mind as I try my best to make something of interest. Now the main thing I would love to see is using this, the gate you can see behind me. There's something which I messed around with a long time ago in Scrap Mechanic off camera, which was essentially a bridge which was made of multiple of these type of things side to side, which would go out and in as you entered the area and then disappeared back into the wall. Very bad description of that, but that is the first thing I want to do. So first of all, let's build ourselves a bridge. So I've only got like five minutes in and I've realised something. We need to build this in the creative mode, not in the R&D labs. Let's build this over a mountain, or between mountains, or something like that. Well, it looks creepy as anything, and I never build here, so we're building in a pillar biome. So I'm going to build a staircase up to here, and then a bridge across onto the pillars themselves, and then have a little tech base on top, which are going to use all the different lights and all the other mechanics. For now, just need to build a very big ramp, and hopefully a very scary bridge. If this works the way I think it works, I'm going to be incredibly happy. It's all to do with the physics between these and us. I want to use the gates as a kind of step, allowing us to be pushed upwards like a tiny little elevator. So, let's see. Wonderful. And then back down the second. Fantastic. And that could be reversed so, so easily. So all it is is a single beam sensor, which then goes into a signal delayer, allowing us to get onto that section without falling off. And then finally, we have the extender, allowing it to stay up for just long enough for us to step off. However, it's a little bit small at the moment and a bit fiddly, so I'm going to make this a lot bigger, at least double the size it is currently, and then repeat that all the way to the top. I should also try and streamline it a little bit. We don't really need these steps when nothing's happening. We could just go from gate to gate, as long as we are willing to move. But that does hint that at some point I'm going to mess up my movement and fall off, so I also need to make it idiot-proof, aka Lathrox-proof. Okay, so this should definitely work at this point, and if it does, we don't really have to talk about how this is made, and I've already got several ideas how to do this in reverse, either on the same system or as just a separate system to the side. I think the separate system to the side would look way better. Anyway, we move into the line, it moves us up. We then move into the next line, it moves us up, and because I've added that second line at the top of there, we can stay here for as long as we want. It's going to stop all of the systems as long as we're in this second higher beam, and it's just the exact same thing as before, just a bit neater. So, I'll be back soon once this is all the way up there. I think I'll have enough space for this. This is definitely the least efficient way of doing this, but I just love how mechanical it is. Okay, let's do what I want it to do. Think of any better wheels though, they don't really like this surface, considering it's just made of multiple smaller surfaces. Also, definitely doesn't need that much delay. We could be doing this a lot faster, 100%. Still though, it works. I think it's really cool and a really interesting way to get from point A to point B. And when have I ever been efficient, let's be real. Now to build ourselves a bridge. And just clean up some stuff as well. For now, it's a floating staircase. Also, this took like half an hour to build because it's really difficult to do little things like this in TerraTech. The build is a bit janky, and at least it was easy enough to do. We can definitely clean it up. I've also used these green lights. What we could do is rather than having the fixed, you can add the variable, and the variable works depending on the amount of input they have. So we could have them all red and then flash green while active, or vice versa, or just something like that anyway. But now, just going to clean it up so I can't actually fall through this section here, and then I want to do the bridge, which, by the way, it turns out the thing I wanted 
is literally showcased in one of the official Terratech videos on this, on one, on one of the tutorial things. I was just making sure I wasn't missing something, and I saw it, and I am so annoyed because it's something I wanted to do from Scrap Mechanic. <laughs> which I think is also in their little challenge run thing. Essentially, we're going to have these all come out in sequence, and it's going to make the bridge appear, and then retract once we've gone past. So once again, it's going to be using a timing system, but this time, we're going to be using this, the, single, the signal transmitter. So you actually need to be on a certain type of tech, otherwise this won't work. Is the idea anyway. Oh, that top hat was what was keeping me online then. Top hats are important. So I press this button, that turns on for a split second, perfect. So what I'm going to have is a load of signal extenders and deliers, and then loads of these in front of me, and I think you can kind of guess how this is going to end up looking. And yeah, we're using this one thing way too much today. I promise we'll at least use the ramp as well, since we are going to try and get from all the different sections of this pillar section. Sectiony section section. It's been long enough without playing this game, I forgot the build limit is in fact a thing. So, yeah, we're gonna build the death bridge here, and that's not gonna cause any problems at all. Now, thankfully, we can make the death bridge more death-defying rather than just this one little gap here by simply moving back the actual structure over there. So, I'll build it like this first, so I don't constantly fall to my death or get very, very annoyed, then we'll move it backwards. Oh, saying that, though, there is the issue of the hill behind it as well. I think it'll be fine. I'm sure no one's gonna quote me on that later. Okay, so this should be really simple. We press the button, it then activates loads of these lovely signal extenders. This will allow us to have enough time, and then between each of these gates, we're gonna have a delay, probably a very short delay, so they extend one after the other, after the other, after the other, and it just looks really nice. Yeah, that's gonna be more than enough time for us to get across. Well then, opening back up and becoming the death trap it was before, unless you have the correct button. Maybe too much time, actually. I also love the fact we have multiple coloured wires. It just makes everything nice and simple, nice and easy. Okay. However, in the design, I thought to put little arrows on the bottom of these blocks as well. Thank you. It did actually take me this long to notice them, but either way, I'm very, very thankful. This is going to be the quick test. As long as this works, then again, we can just kind of skip ahead without really discussing all that much. I don't know how much we're going to be using the logic gates today, because all the things I want to do, I think, are going to be pretty simple. That one, then the next. Lovely. Probably less delay than that, though. Okay, so this should now work out just fine. If I can place this last block, that would be great. There we go, thank you. So you press the button. And then, there we go, the bridge materialises. And that's it, nice and smooth. Perfect. And then after, I think it's currently set to 30 seconds, it will then close. And by close, I mean open. So turn off. Yeah, maybe it's a bit too much delay. I think it's actually more than 30 seconds, I'm now realising, because that is taking way too long, since I do want to see the effect after I get across the bridge. I'm, gonna t I'm just going to take half of these out. Or we'll turn them down. Perfect. And there we go. And if we want to go across it again, we just press the button on our tech. Really love that effect. Such a shame it was in the trailer. Okay, so next up then, I want, I want to make a locking gate. So you have to do a small puzzle. Essentially, all it's going to be is a set of values you put in. If you add them together, it adds to the correct amount. Then that will activate the gate itself. Yeah, it's perfect. All I'm going to need is a little pin code, then. Anyone who's good at Redstone or good at Terratech right now is probably screaming at me, because this is absolute jankiness incarnate. <laughs> but you know what? It's going to work, and that's the important thing. And it's so splayed out just so I can see what's actually going on, though I now realise I've probably made it more complex than it needs to be, considering what a simple idea this actually is. So I'll explain this in just a moment when I'm finished off, though feel free to guess what madness I have just made. It's... Really simple, like, objectively simple. Well, I figured out how to make a really lazy pulse as well, so that's nice. It turns out there's a much simpler way to do what I was just doing, so I am now redoing the entire thing, because that's just the kind of genius I am. I understand how to do things half an hour after I do them. This video is going to probably be maybe 20 minutes long. I just spent an hour setting this up. 
I didn't need to. I have done something like this with Redstone and in other games, and for some reason my brain would just not wrap around this really, really simple mechanism. So, it's this one, this one, this one, and this one, and once they're all active, da 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 we have a light, which means the signal is going through. Once it's daytime and I've cleaned up all the random debris currently stuck within all the wires, I'll explain what this mess is. Now, bear in mind, this is not a neat way of doing this, and there are still other ways to do it, but my original way had the wires going all out to here, all the way to the right-hand side of the screen, because my brain turned off for a good hour there. I don't know what's going on with me today, it's just... Basic, basic things are just not within my grasp, but still, it works, and we can make it smaller later. Okay, so I am terrible at explaining this, but it is a really simple mechanism, and it's all to do with this AND gate. So the AND gate requires two signals. If both signals are positive, then it sends the final signal all the way to that light. And these two signals are all to do with the incorrect buttons and the correct buttons, or the toggles. If all of the incorrect toggles are off, then it goes to this equals gate, which is then equal to nothing because there's nothing on the other side, and then that sends a signal. If a single one of these is on, or any combination of the incorrect ones are on, then it's no longer equal to the other side, which again is nothing, and thus this signal doesn't pass, and then the AND gate simply can't turn on. As for the correct toggles, these are all being added together, and once there's a grand total of four, then this is equal to the input adder, and once again, it will go forward. So it needs all of the correct ones on, and all of the incorrect ones off. So no other combination of toggles will possibly send a signal. That's it. I don't know why, but I was involving knock gates and all sorts of other weirdness and XORs. I don't know what I was doing to begin with. It still would have worked, but it would have been like triple the size. So what we're going to do now is set this up. So we have a little, um, where is it? Yeah, I would like some ramps. Either one or a couple of ramps, then leading to a doorway. All of these turn on once this code is set up. So at the moment, you need a tech with the correct block, then you need the code, then you're allowed, allowed entrance to what is currently just a broken airship plain thing. Okay, well at least what I want to do now is relatively simple. Here is a knock gate. It activates if there's no signal. If there is a signal, it deactivates. That is that. So right now there is a signal, so it is deactivated. If we were to break this, there we go, up to 90 degrees and thus blocking our path. I'm going to have one on the opposite side as well doing the same, and then a little gateway. What if we did something like this? I think this is either going to look really silly or really interesting, I'm not sure which. Actually, I quite like that. I mean, it's a nice auto bridge, definitely easier than one I've made to this side there. Huh. Now, of course, what would be nice as well is once we're in our main base, whoops a daisy, nope, don't. Oh, of course. Anyway, what I was going to say is, as I just hang here for a second, is when we make our full base, it'd be nice to be able to turn off this uh, this ramp from a distance. I'm not too sure how you do that with this particular mechanism. I mean, it'd be easy enough to disrupt this particular line there, just add another AND gate and then hook it up to a little switch inside the base, but then you'd have all this mechanism. Oh, I guess that makes sense, yeah. So that way there's a kill switch in the base itself. Oh, yeah, then that's super easy and that would override everything. Said it was difficult. Realise it's easy, five seconds later. Okay, I'll be back up there in a second. So yeah, this would have been so much faster with a ramp, but it is so much cooler having all these different mechanisms. Oh, I love that, absolutely love that. Okay, let's set up the rest of this bridge to the other side, and then I'll just make a little kill switch inside, maybe some lights or a little door here. In fact, maybe a door on both sides. No, just a door on the inside, otherwise we won't be able to see the bridge going down. Way too much delay on this bridge. That should be long gone. Whee! Okay, so that's the door through. Really? It's my top hat. My top hat's too big. Okay, fine. We go one up because we are not taking off the top hat. Okay, there we go. We can now enter nice and easily. So all we need to do now is set up a kill switch, which we're just going to put here and put in blue. This will be the simplest thing ever. So let's just put it on this nice little set of very pretty blocks. And this one here. So all it's going to be is, if we go to accessories again, just, this will just be a basic button. 
No, not but I toggle. And this will destroy the whole mechanism once it is on. There we are. And now let's just wire this up and set it to a knock gate on the other side. Also, it is night time, I swear, every time I start talking at the moment. Let's ignore the fact I just got caught on my own bridge. This is probably going to glitch me out as well. If I was attached... When did I cut off half of the... How did I even do that? Anyway, there we are. Okay, nice and simple. There's just an AND switch there, so it means it needs both of these to be on. So me turning this off will turn off the whole mechanism permanently. So no matter what you do over there, it's not going to work. But if you turn this on, it will still require the other half to be active, so if this is incorrect, it'll turn off as well. Nice and simple, just like my brain. Okay, let's just make this bridge a bit safer, because I keep on almost falling off, and then I'll put something of treasure here, and then try and hide the wires a little bit. At that point, we're pretty much done with all of the basic stuff. I don't think there's anything else simple we can really mess around with. Well, I guess there is the colours. Uh, yeah, so we have the variable colour panel here. The, sorry, the variable colour pixel. This will give you different lights depending on the value hitting them. So it goes through all of the colour spectrum. But that's going to be a bit complex. For instance, you can set up clocks and everything else. As we found out earlier, you can very easily set up a little um, pulser. So there's loads of different things you could do very, very easily there. Now the question is, can you set things to... Oh yeah, and you even have a stopwatch anyway. Starts and stops a timer based on input A. Clear and reset solid timer on input B. Okay, that's pretty straightforward then. Yeah, all the simple stuff I think I've done. There is definitely more complex things to do, but that'll be a separate video once I've got more of a hang of stuff. And honestly, at that point, we may as well start building permanent things back in my uh, playthrough world. So that's going to be a little while. But really happy with this, though. The amount of stuff this has added to base building is phenomenal. So I'll be right back once a little bit more has been done. Now I'm safe. Going to add the most simple little defense mechanism here. A defense, not against enemies, but for people like me falling off, because people like me will fall off this if there is a chance to fall off. There we go. Now the bridge actually looks like a proper bridge. And we do that, and now it's dangerous. Actually, that looks really nice. I'm really happy with that. Also, raise the walls over here. I'm going to keep on doing this type of aesthetic, so I'll be back when I continue to do more. Then I also want to add some lights here and there, because I've got to be honest, I'm now realising why I never build in this biome. It is so absurdly dark. Okay, that looks neater at least. We'll do for now, considering this isn't a permanent base, but I will come back to this if more things are added. Yeah, the staircase can just stay as a floating staircase for now on a backdrop. Ahem. Thank you. Everything else is good. And now, finally, to make my little hidden treasure, and then we call it a day. No one can disturb me. There we are, the true treasure. Which, of course, is you for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. This has been a really fun first look at all the new mechanics, and definitely something I will be bringing back to the game once I'm playing this more as a regular thing on the channel. So don't worry, it will be back eventually. As always, I come and go from games like this because they are super fun, but also do take up a lot of time. But this has really piqued my interest. So if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, Importantly, shows that Terra Tech is a series you wish to see continued even after all this time. And also, I will be opening up a Patreon in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for that, because this is where I would normally say the names of people who support the channel. But again, that's more in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Top hats away, and I'll see you next time. Isn't he dashing? Needs a bigger beard like me, though. <laughs>